Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and today's video is going to be about the builder pattern. Now, I just want to say before we start, if you're watching this video and you haven't used the builder pattern before, I highly recommend you actually sit and watch today's video because the builder pattern is one of the easiest design patterns to learn when it comes to programming. It's got many benefits and it actually can change the way you think about your designs. Okay, so this video is highly recommended. I want to go over a couple of things before we actually jump right into the code. So this video is going to be mostly coding and not so much talking. The main three benefits I would say of the builder pattern is going to be uh, these three things. So the first one is going to be uh, the ability to, you know, create immutable objects. Okay, so using the builder pattern, we can actually avoid the need to have private setters on the uh, on the actual classes for the objects which we are creating. And we're going to see how this works in the actual code example. And that is your first benefit. The next benefit is going to be uh, the ability to uh, keep some of your higher level validation in one place. So we're going to see in the example, but for example, when it comes to cars, cars can be electric and they can have cylinders. Now, electric cars can't have cylinders, right? So that logic check right there needs to be done on the setter for the cylinders and the actual fuel type, electric, hybrid, petrol. So we can use the builder pattern to centralize some validation and that right there is super beneficial. And the last benefit of the builder pattern is going to be, uh, you know, to create um, really easy to read code when it comes to building up your objects. So it's very verbose, okay? We can use setters method chaining to say, you know, set my cylinders, set my fuel type for the car, you know, um, and this avoids very long constructors and parameter lists, which once again, we're going to see how this works in the code example. When it comes to the code example, we're going to be using TypeScript. Now, why did I choose TypeScript? Well, the first reason is because I like TypeScript. And the second reason is because my channel is mainly focused on JavaScript. So I wanted to choose a language which is close to JavaScript. Of course, in this case, it's going to be TypeScript. But don't worry, because this example right here, this implementation can be applied to almost any object oriented language such as Java or C Sharp. We're going to be focusing on the actual design and implementation not so much the fact that it's TypeScript. So let's get right into it right now. Okay, so now let's use TypeScript to demonstrate how you might go about implementing the builder pattern. Okay, so in this project right here, I've included both TypeScript and TS Node. If you want to download this code, you can in the description below. So the example I'm going to be showing you is going to be how we can use the builder pattern to create instances of a car. Okay, so cars have cylinders as well as a uh, as a fuel type. For example, we have petrol, hybrid, or electric cars. Okay, so let's go inside here, make a new directory called car. This will contain two files. The first one is going to be car.ts, and this file is going to contain the main car class as well as the car builder. Okay, the next file is going to be called fuel type. And this one is going to be a simple enum of different fuel types, for example, petrol, hybrid, and electric. So let's do this one right now. We're going to say enum fuel type is going to contain those three values of petrol, hybrid, and electric. And we, and, and we can now just simply export the class or the enum of fuel type right here. And we are done with this file. Okay, so now. Heading back inside the car.ts, let's begin by creating the class of car, which of course the actual application is going to be interacting with. Okay, so we can say export default class of car. And this one right here is going to have two private fields. Of course, cars are quite complex, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to have two fields. The first one is going to be a private field called cylinders of type number to of course detail the number of cylinders inside the car. The next one is going to be called fuel type and this one here is going to be of type of course fuel type just like this and of course this can be you know electrical, hybrid or petrol. Okay so now 
let's create two getters to expose these private fields. We're going to say public get cylinders. Okay, it's going to return the type of sorry, it's going to return this dot cylinders. Okay, and once again, one more this time for field type. So of course, get field type is going to return us the field type right there. So of course, pretty simple example. So now let's stop here and make a new file called index.ts to actually use this car class. So we're going to say const car is equal to a new instance of our car right here. We can now say, for example, you know, car dot, and we've got access to the get cylinders and the get fuel type methods. So there is one very important thing about this right here, and that is that there is no setters available. I can't say set cylinders or set fuel type, and this right here achieves immutability. Okay, so as the program runs, at any point, we cannot change the internal state of the car using setters. So this right here, uh, you know, gives you safer code. I'm not going to go into detail of the benefits of immutability in this video, but just know that in many cases, immutability is going to make your code a lot safer. Okay, so there's actually one problem with this uh, with this code right here, and that is that I can call new car just like this. So basically. The constructor for the car is public and any part of my code can access it or create cars in this fashion. But when it comes to the builder pattern, you don't want anything but the builder to create your cars. Okay, so we need to stop code uh, from existing like this where we can say new car. We want only the builder to be able to do that. Okay, so let's go back inside here. We're going to say private constructor just like this so now um, only the code inside this uh, this uh, class can have access to the constructor which means now back inside here I can no longer call the um, the constructor just like this so let's remove this and go back to the car class so when it comes to the builder Okay, so the builder is going to be an inner class or nested class of this class right here. So different languages have different ways of doing this. In TypeScript, you can go down here and you can say static builder is equal to class. Okay, so now just a heads up inside this class right here, because it is a nested class of this car, it can call the constructor for the car even though it's private. So that right there is actually key to this thing actually working. So we're going to see how that works uh, later on. But for now, let's go down here and create the class of builder. Okay, so we're going to be using the exact same properties as above. So let's copy this right here and go down here and paste it. And we can now give defaults for these fields if we want to. For example, we can say the car will by default have four cylinders and the fuel type is going to be, uh, you know, let's just do petrol by default. Okay, so now just keep in mind also that these instance or these private fields right here are different to these fields right here. It's a completely separate class even though it's nested. Okay, so now let's create the same getters inside this class. So I'm going to copy this right here and go down here and paste those two getters inside there and it works in the exact same way. But where it gets interesting is we can now start implementing your setters. Okay, so this right here, you know, your setters are going to be made available to you before the car has been built. So basically, we're preparing the data for the car, which means the validation is going to be also inside here. So Let's make a new class called, or new method, sorry, called public set cylinders. This right here will take in the number of cylinders, once again of type number, and we can say something like this.cylinders is equal to the cylinders which we pass in. We can also return the instance of the builder, and this right here is going to give us the ability to do method chaining. We're going to see how this works very shortly. But when it comes to the cylinders, 
we only want um, you know the programmer to choose a certain number of cylinders so let's go up here and we're gonna say if not then define some valid cylinder counts we're gonna say 0 4 6 8 10 and 12 these are all valid values for the cylinders okay we can now say dot includes then of course pass through here cylinders so now essentially if the provided cylinder count is not one of these values right here we can throw an error we're going to say throw new error and we're going to say invalid number of cylinders just like this okay so now let's stop here and go inside the index.ts and make a new instance of the car builder we're going to say const car builder is equal to a new car builder or sorry car dot builder just like this so of course referencing the inner or nested class we can now say inside here you know something like dot set cylinders and we can say for example eight so eight cylinders right and that all works perfectly fine so basically this setter is going to set your cylinder count to be eight inside the builder let's do the exact same thing for the field type we can just say right down here you know public set field type then pass through here of course you know taking in your field type of type uh, fuel type right there and we can say this dot field type is equal to the field type which you pass in once again returning the instance of the builder so now using method chaining go back inside here we can now say dot set fuel type and pass through here for example fuel type dot hybrid so of course by returning this we're able to say you know directly onto this use method chaining to of course call the next method right there okay so now that is that is the main part of your builder done so now how do we actually you know um, create the instance of the car so basically we need to call the constructor right here so to achieve that we're going to be creating one more method on the builder it's going to be called build we're going to say public build right here it's going to return okay we're going to say return a new instance of the car okay then we're going to pass through this instance of the builder okay so like i said earlier we can call new car inside here because you know even though it's private this builder can access the private methods or constructors of the parent class but of course down here we need to specify the parameter type um, you know for the constructor so back up here it's going to take through the builder so we're going to say right here builder of type we're going to say type of car dot builder dot prototype so of course in typescript this right here is how you would define the type for in a class like this for example um, in java or a different language it might be a lot simpler you know it might just be for example type of car builder okay but that is how it is in typescript so let's go down here and we're going to say this dot cylinders is equal to then builder dot get cylinders okay so basically this constructor is going to trust that the builder has validated these values okay so now let's do the exact same thing for the fuel type we can say this dot fuel type equal to builder dot get fuel type so now let's go back inside this file and change this uh, constant to be car instead and we're going to chain on and we're going to say dot build right here so now if I say you know console dot log I can say for example number of cylinders then pass through here car dot get cylinders so the car is now the instance of you know the actual car itself from the builder it's been transformed into a car using the build method right cool so now we can also say you know fuel type is just going to be car dot get fuel type so now let's save this and run this application so we're going to say you know uh, npm start press enter and now we can see we get number of cylinders eight and the fuel type is one 
going inside the fuel type enum, we can see one is going to be hybrid, you know, zero, one, two. So there you go. That's the builder pattern working. But there is one thing we actually missed, and that was the fact that if I say, for example, fuel type dot electric, okay? So I've got eight cylinders in an electric vehicle. It doesn't make sense. Electric vehicles can't have cylinders, okay? So if I run this, we can see it's still going to work, okay? We get eight cylinders and fuel type of two. So we need to validate this logic. So going back inside the car, we can put this logic right here inside the set cylinders method. We're going to say, you know, for example, if this dot get cylinders is greater than zero. So basically, if we have cylinders and this dot get fuel type is equal to, you know, fuel type dot uh, electric, for example, uh, we need to throw an error. We need to say, you know, throw a new error and we can say electric cars cannot have cylinders just like this. Okay, so let's save this and go back inside here. Let's run this and we're fine. Okay, so the reason for that is because I called set fuel type after the check has been done. So we need to, of course, copy this logic and put it down here in the fuel type also. Let's try again and now we can see we do in fact get that error and it says electric vehicles cannot have cylinders. Okay, so what's the problem with this? Of course, you might have guessed we have duplicate or we've duplicated or copied um, this this check in two places. Of course, that right there is bad practice. So how do we fix that? Well, this right here is where the build method you know has its shine, right? So we can actually move this down into the build method itself. So of course, right up here we can place that logic. So this right here is one of my favorite benefits of using the builder pattern. And that is when you have validation checks that involve multiple, you know, properties or multiple fields, you can keep it in one place and do it once only. So now go inside here and run this. And we can see, of course, we also have, or well, we, we still have that error and that's working perfectly fine. So that right there is an example of how to implement the builder pattern. Uh, this of course being TypeScript, but you can do it this way in almost any language which supports all of these basic object oriented features like Java, C Sharp, for example. So let's just recap on how this thing works or um, the actual key things to take from this example. The first one's gonna be the immutability of the car. So of course saying car, you know, uh, car dot, we cannot, you know, change um, uh, the car state using setters. It's all, you know, there's only getters available, right? The second thing is going to be that we're able to do some validation, which requires, you know, multiple fields in one place inside the build method. And the last primary benefit of using the builder pattern right here is going to be the fact that, you know, using the builder, we're very, you know, clear about what we're actually doing. So of course, right up here, we're saying set cylinders of eight. We know what we're doing. You know, we're setting the cylinders of eight. It's very clear, right? Same goes for the fuel type. If this right here was a traditional constructor example, it looks something like this, where you have const car two equal to a new car, then passing through here, for example, eight and then fuel type dot electric. So right here, using the enum, it's quite clear to see that it's going to be the fuel type in the second argument position. But the eight here could be absolutely anything. It could be horsepower, torque, number of seats. I don't know. I'm not too sure, right? There's no label going along with it. So using the builder pattern and these setters, it eliminates the problem of having positional arguments and having an absolute mess of an argument list. So there it is, guys. You know, that's how to do an, uh, that's how to do a builder pattern using TypeScript. Hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from today's video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.